Hey, what's up, everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. Uh, as you guys know, during the Olympic run for Team USA's men's basketball team, there were some controversial moments. And a lot of it had to do with the substitution patterns and the coaching decisions, the strategy of Steve Kerr and his coaching staff, which was comprised of NBA coaches and Eric Spolstra uh, and Tyron Lue. Some people were criticizing the strategy uh, that they were using and some, some people were criticizing their substitution patterns. And one of the main criticisms of the team is the lack uh, uh, the, uh, the lack of use of Jason Tatum, right? A lot of people were upset with Steve Kerr and Steve Kerr and his coaching staff. A lot of people were calling out uh, the team. Uh, I even heard that at one point, Draymond Green was calling out Steve Kerr's coaching decisions. I'm like, okay, isn't that your coach in real life, like in the NBA? That was a bit strange. Uh, but one of the people that was critical of this team was Charles Barkley. I remember him talking about uh, Joel Embiid showing up being overweight and he was also upset at the way um, they were handling the Jason Tatum situation right by them not playing him I think him going two games where he didn't play any minutes at all uh, and a lot of people were upset with that so Charles Barkley went out there and voiced his opinions so what happened uh, there was a show on ESPN where they were reacting to the comments that uh, Charles Barkley made. And one of the people reacting to what Charles Barkley said was Kendrick Perkins, right? So Kendrick Perkins put out some statements in response to Charles Barkley. And then Charles Barkley was recently on the Dan Lebertar show where, excuse me, the Dan, uh, yeah, the Dan Lebertar show where they brought up what Kendrick Perkins had to say. And he absolutely just slam dunked him and flame broiled him. But to give you guys some context of what was said initially, what we'd like to do now is play the original comments from Kendrick Perkins on ESPN. So you guys will at least hear that. So it'll make more sense listening to Charles Bark Barkley's response to that. So take a listen to Draymond Green. I mean, Draymond, Kendrick Perkins here. Hey, look, Charles Barkley, you know, one of the greatest power forwards to ever play the game of basketball, one of the greatest players to ever touch the damn basketball. And look, one of the greatest TV personalities ever. But this was just an asinine way of talking about Team USA and what's been going on for us, them representing our country. Look, this team has been balling, and they are going to get battle tested, right? The game has got has become global, right? You got Europeans, the, uh, they're starting to catch, they have caught up with us. When you think about who, they, who Team USA had to battle against yesterday, Jokic is the best player in basketball, right? They had to find a way to grind it out. They earned that win. That was the best game that I've seen in basketball in the last six or seven years, to be honest with you. So you heard what Kendrick Perkins had to say, right? So these were the comments that Charles Barkley is responding to. So what we'd like to do now is we'd like to play what Chuck had to say, which I thought was hilarious. And I also want you guys to listen to some of his reasoning behind his criticism of Steve Kerr and the coaching staff. Take a listen to Charles Barkley here. You said you were critical of Kerr and you said that they should not, that team should not be tested. And Kendrick Perkins said that was an asinine take that of course they well, should be tested. Well, first of all, don't, listen, don't, don't bring up bring them up a guy who averaged five points a game. I'm not going to stoop to his level. You average five <laughs> points a game, shut the hell up. Um, Dan, let me ask you a question. Who was the second best player on Serbia? Uh, no, buddy. You're, look, I don't think they should have been tested either. Uh, no, but I, my question was, <laughs> number one, they got Joker, but the second best player on their team was Bogdanovich. Does Bogdanovich make the United States Olympic team? Under no circumstances he make the Olympic team. Um, I think they played too slow uh, because you could see what Joker was doing. He was milking the clock. He would take the ball out of bounds and roll it up the court. They they turned it in, they turned a forty minute game basically into like a thirty five to thirty seven minute game. 
So they let them play slow. I think they should have played a lot faster. And, you know, that every time we say something now, people go crazy. There's no reason for him not to play Jason Tatum. Uh, Jason Tatum would have been the second best player on Serbia. Probably would have been the best player on France. For him not to get any minutes in two games, come on, man, that wasn't right. That wasn't fair. Uh, you, you, if you, if you go into the Olympics, you want to play. You want to play. So um, I was disappointed Jason didn't get to play. I was disappointed Halliburton, especially early. Like, if you want to shorten your rotation in the last couple of games, that's fine. But them guys dedicated their summer to the United States to go over there and not get to play. I didn't like that at all. So you heard what Charles Barkley had to say, right? He was just basically like, um, you know, you can't talk to me uh, if you're a dude that only, what is the average, five points per game. You can't talk to me. I'm a top 75 guy and all of those different things, right? He basically just uh, pulled rank on Kendrick Perkins now. What do I think about what Chuck had to say there? First of all, I think that Team USA embarrassed Jason Tatum. Uh, he even came out and spoke about it. We did a show reacting to some of his comments where he was talking about what it was like, uh, you know, going through that experience, right? How it was humbling for him, how it was difficult for him and all of that. We discussed this on the channel. If you haven't seen it, we dropped that video about a day or two ago. You can just go check it out on the channel there, right? But to me, they disrespected him. For those of you who may be unaware of this, Jason Tatum was the only American NBA player this year, the only American NBA player this year to make the all first NBA team. He was the only one. Yes, you heard me right. Jason Tatum was the only American basketball player to make the all NBA team. If you listen to Charles Barkley there, it almost seemed it almost seemed as if he was making a case for Jason Tatum being a top five player in the NBA. He was making a case for that, right? Obviously, he didn't win the finals MVP. Jalen Brown won the finals MVP, but Jason Tatum had the stats. But Jalen Brown had some very, very impactful moments for the Boston Celtics in the NBA finals. Needless to say, he's a great player. In terms of Charles Barkley shutting down uh, Kendrick Perkins, this is, I, I guess this is what happens in the world of sports because I've seen Shaq try to pull rank on Charles Barkley, not as a top 75 guy, but as a guy that won multiple championships and you guys know Charles Barkley never won the championship, right? But Charles has also been one of those people that uh, uh, um, um, made the phrase famous of, you know, being a bus driver, referring to Kevin Durant. He was like, there's some people driving the bus and there's some people at the back of the bus. He's like, you're the man when you're the one driving the bus and winning championships. That was one of the reasons Charles Barkley um, gave Kobe Bryant a lot of his props. When Kobe came back and won those championships without Shaq, he really elevated him in his all-time rankings because he was able to prove that he could do it as the main guy, right? That was That's a big thing for him. But in, case of, in the case of him just dismissing Kendrick Perkins, I think it's par for the course, man. This is how <laughs> this is how these guys be. This is how these dudes be talking to each other, man. Nothing surprises me here. Uh, that's just the, the you know, that's the NBA talk, right? The way basketball players speak to one another. So we're in the middle of August. Um, this is kind of like the low period in sports content is really nothing to talk about. But every once in a while, one of few one or two interesting things come up. Uh, you know, during this period as we're all waiting for the NBA season to start, which is going to be starting in the next, I'll say, month and a half. Uh, things start kicking off towards late September when training camp and all of that. And then, of course, in October, when things start to get really, really uh, exciting. But throughout throughout the off season, people are looking for, uh, you know, um, various things to say. Uh, and that's what happened here. Yesterday, I tuned in to an episode of Gil's Arena. And on the panel, they had... Um, Gilbert Arenas, Rashar McCann, and uh, Kendrick Perkins, right? And they were talking about a range of different things. I think at one point they were talking about Paul George with the Philadelphia 76ers. I think they were talking about LeBron's legacy in the Olympics. Um, and they were talking about a bunch of different things. Yeah, and then they got to the Lakers where they were talking about, 
you know, their expectations for JJ Reddick coming to the season. I guess there was a backstory of they were filming somewhere, I think in Vegas and JJ Reddick was, I think outside the studio giving like ice grilling Rashard McCann and Rashard McCann is there filming something like that. Some kind of weird interaction. I don't know. Right. I don't know what that's about, but they were kind of alluding to it. So they didn't get to the point where they're like, well, you know, uh, what are your expectations for the Lakers this season, right? Where do you think this team is going to end up being? And what ensued after that was just absolute comedy because they were out here talking about, yeah, you know, I think the Lakers are going to be really good. And other players like Kendrick, uh, uh, Kenya Martin, it was like, bro, what the hell are you even talking about? So for those of you who didn't hear uh, this exchange here, I want to play for you now and I want to come back and react to their comments. Take a listen to these guys here. So, Lakers excited about this roster. J.J. Redick making his NBA head coaching debut with this squad. Is a healthy Lakers a top four team in the West? <laughs> After the look J.J. gave us in, 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 in Vegas. It was, it was a confusing look. And the way he treated my boy Steve. I don't got no love for the Lakers, man. You ain't got to have love for him. No, what? what Just they, tell the truth. the excuses you, you not, need not to like the Lakers? We know not, you don't like. You don't need look, another excuse. There's going to be more excuses. This was the, the way they did Steve, the yeah. way J.J. looked, the way they The way smelled. they did Darvin Ham. <laughs> <laughs> they cooked that ham so, over there, man. So, Sean, when we man. saw J.J. in Vegas, uh, he was outside the glass when we were at the uh, Sirius XM Studios at the Wind doing our Gills Arenas from Vegas. Kind of gave you a look. Did not come it, it, it in. No doubt. Kind of like come outside. Look, like why come see me. Outside. Why this window right here? <laughs> why, why Move this window. Then? Which was why obviously you, outside, you lift we a lot of weight, so I was kind of curious yeah, well, with I'm that look. Took your mic you can't off. come to my work. You can't come to work. Came to your place of business. Talk about uh, your makeshift work. temporary place work, of business. Man. Duke I'm Carolina rivalry. Yeah. Did not even walk in and have some tasty teas cheesecake. Duke didn't get a Perrier. None of that. I heard him say it was Duke Blue. That's what I heard. Duke Blue. That's what they be saying. He ain't never won one though. Top four? No. With this squad? No. Nah. Not a chance. <gasps> if they're healthy? No. This squad? This squad healthy? Nah. nah. Mm -mm. Maybe the, what was it, last year or the year before? The year before they went against Joker and them? Uh, twice, back-to-back -back seasons, uh, Western Conference Finals. Twice with the Western Conference Finals, that was, that was kind of like, you could take this roster then. Similar squad, though. But you can't do it now, everybody's now, involved. I got, I got us fifth. Or six. Six. Okay, I got that's reason. I got, you know what I mean? We got, we got, we got. Comfortably bring, in bring playoffs. Bring your son to, bring your son to career day, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, when, when you bring your son, you got to do extra <laughs> right? You got to pretend, you know, that he can bring his son. He got to pretend that he's bigger than what he is. Yeah, yeah, so this is what we do. This. That's going to be broad. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have the average about 32, son. This is how I do this <laughs> Woo, we might get a new broad. <laughs> we yeah. might get a 32-year-old broad now. He averaged 32. Y'all going to be 12th place. Damn, mm. say that. Damn, okay. Mm. Oh, damn. Have some faith. I know, man. <laughs> God damn, dog. Man, the play in regularly. He averaged 32. That, that but, but no, no. Don't say we the play in. We are the playoff team. No, play in. No, 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 no. Old school record, we playoff team. No, We've been seven about two 20, times. We're talking about 24, 25 season. Yeah. Mm. I, I get it. But we still a seven seed both years. That's a playoff that's, team. That's why you bring it up old shit. <laughs> like, so when people are like, Eddie, y'all barely made the playoff. No, we're a seven seed two years straight. We ain't the ninth or tenth seed, and we getting, and then we, we getting help. We are legit seven seed. In season tournament champions, playing champions. Mm -hmm. But bring it, Bray, look, hey, man, he bringing his son, he bringing his son to school. I mean, he bringing his son to his job, so he might be on a you whole look nother good. level, you dog. Look so you heard what they had to say. What are my thoughts on them talking about the Lakers, um, where they're going to be next season, right? In terms of, uh, you know, the outlook. Well, I'm actually trying to pull up the, the NBA standings right now. Okay. Let's look at the NBA standings last year. All right. And I believe this is correct. Yes. Last year, let's just look at the Western Conference. You had the Oklahoma City Thunder at number one. You had the Denver Nuggets at number two. You had the Minnesota Timberwolves at number three. You had the Los Angeles Clippers in number four. You had the Dallas Mavericks in number five. You had the Phoenix Suns in number six. Uh, and these were the following playing teams. You had the New Orleans Pelicans in number seven. The Los Angeles Lakers in number eight. Um, 
you had the Sacramento Kings at number nine, and you had the Golden State Warriors at number 10. And then I think the Lakers um, ended up beating the Pelicans. Yes, they ended up beating the Pelicans. And then uh, for that seventh seed, and they ended up facing Denver in round one. Right, I remember that. So these were the standings, right? You have OKC at one, Denver two, Minnesota three, Clippers four, Dallas, Phoenix, and then New Orleans, LA, Sacramento, and Golden State. Gilbert Arenas is saying, oh, they could probably be a seven seed. The host is saying, could they be a four seed? Now, the four seed is just total delusion. But let's discuss the reality of the Lakers possibly going up the ladder next year. Oklahoma City is going to be one of the top seeds in the West, given the fact that a lot of people thought SGA should have won the MVP. There's going to be some motivation there. Denver is definitely going to be in the mix. Right, they lost uh, uh, um, Jackson. He went to the Sixers. Uh, Reggie Jackson. He went to the Sixers, and they replaced him with Russell Westbrook. That was their big off-season acquisition after losing Bruce Brown. And I think they lost KCP. I'm not sure. I think they lost him. I'm not sure. But anyway, you have Denver in the mix. They're going to be a top team. You have the Minnesota Timberwolves, who I believe went to the Western Conference Finals against the Dallas Mavericks. So you have them. Those are going to be top teams. Then you have the Dallas Mavericks, who, of course, are going to be a top seed. And then you have the other teams in the mix. You have the Phoenix Suns. You have the Clippers, who I don't know what's going to happen with them. And you have the Lakers. And then you have the Warriors. The real question they're asking in that soundbite is, do you believe that the Lakers are going to be a contender next year? That's the real question, right? That's where it's all leading to. Well, we have to look at the roster. For example, let's look at the Clippers. They lost some players. They lost Paul George. They lost Russell Westbrook. They retained Kawhi. They retained James Harden. And they picked up uh, some other pieces that I, that I can't remember right now. The Dallas Mavericks are also going to be there. What moves did the Lakers make? The Lakers made, they drafted uh, um, the shooter at 17, I forgot his name, uh, the 17th pick, and they drafted Bronny James. Those are the only real offseason moves that they made, and really, that was through, through the draft, right? So the Lakers, by and large, are the same team. They're the same team that's one year older. LeBron will be 40 years old this year. Now, there are people out there that have said, oh, well, you know, we believe the Lakers could have done better had they not drawn the, um, what is it? The Denver Nuggets. I'm not sure about that. I think OKC is legit. Denver is obviously legit. I think Minnesota is legit. And I think that Dallas is legit. I think those are the top four teams in the West this year as well. And then, of course, you have to think about the Memphis Grizzlies, who's going to be having John Morant come back. And they're a pretty good team, even when Jai's not there. But I think they went through some injuries last year. So... Will the Lakers be good? I think they'll be good enough to be a playoff team. That I do believe. In terms of challenging those teams at the top of the conference, I don't believe so. I don't believe the Clippers are as well. I think the top teams are going to be Denver, OKC, Minnesota, Dallas. And then we need to look for whoever's going to come out of the Western Conference out of those four uh, teams there. So... Uh, it seems like ESPN first take was back and I missed it, right? Uh, but now that I was going through the internet today, I started seeing different clips. I'm like, oh, ESPN first take was was, was going on. By back, I mean Stephen A. Smith was there. Uh, Chris Mad Dog Russo was there. Molly Karam was there. So I was like, okay, they have the usual crew that was there. I was surprised to see that because I hadn't seen them uh, in quite some time. So whenever you they have Chris Mad Dog Russo on there, you know, it's going to be fireworks with his energy. Uh, and his takes and him always, you know, showing love to the old school and all of that. Right. And there's a segment that he does, I believe, every Wednesday. Right. And they have like a lead up clip, like a compilation of clips lead up, which is hilarious of him, like is actually hilarious. But essentially, I think every week there's this clip where uh, not this clip, this segment where it's about like what Mad Dog is mad about. Right. This week or something like that. And it's usually very, 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 very entertaining. Uh, and this week was no exception. But this particular week, he decided to take aim at the USA's men's basketball 
team. Now, if you guys know anything about ESPN, um, ESPN is a very interesting network. They're pro uh, Lakers. They're pro the players now. They have a lot of guys going on. Like Mike Greenberg just came on there and said that what Stephen Curry did was the greatest moment or his most memorable moment he's seen in NBA history. So they're like prisoners of the moment. They're the prisoners of the moment network uh, in sports, right? So when you have a guy like Chris Mad Dog Russo on there, it kind of, you know, throws like a monkey wrench into their entire operation. And they've been one of the ones that have been promoting this Team USA. This last one, are they, are they on the level of the Dream Team and all of that? So it's understandable that people like Chris Mad Dog Russo will be looking at them with a side eye like, well, if y'all saying they like the Dream Team, let me see what you got. And if you guys know, going into this tournament, they were the heavy favorites. They were the favorites to win every single game by wide margins. Even the even the um, the champion, the, what is it, the gold medal game? They had they were like favored by like seventeen points, right? So when he gets all when he goes into this rant that he normally goes into, you could actually start to see people getting uncomfortable, like with what he was saying, because the, he seemed to go off script from what ESPN is usually used to. So what I'd like to do now is like to play exactly what he had to say. It's only about a minute clip or so. So I want you guys to take a listen to what he had to say here. And I'm going to come back and really get into the meat and potatoes of the show. Take a listen to that there. I am sick of this USA basketball on the men's side making a big deal about winning a gold medal. Oh, come and on, Stephon man, Curry dog. putting people to sleep. It's a 10-day tournament. That was the great Stephon. Oh, oh come on. down. Stephen. They are Steph at Steph whatever his name is. Whoa, 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 whoa. It Steph Curry with the shots. It is they play six games, and you know what they were favored? You know what they were favored in the, in the gold medal game? By 16 points! They got a million Hall of Famers on this team. And then Duran is tweeting after the game, look at me with all these gold medals. And he's on the slide. And tweeting, oh, calm down, guys, calm down. The most significant gold medal, gold medal in basketball we ever won, without a doubt, is 1976, because that's Mad after dog. we got Mad absolutely dog. killed no. in 72 in Munich. But the idea that we are going to make a big deal that Durant and Davis and Embiid and Booker and Curry and LeBron, these are the, some of the greatest basketball players in the history of creation, and they beat Evan Fournay and was supposed to get excited. Wow. I mean, you, and Batone, whatever his name is. I mean, you got to be kidding me that this is that big Yo, deal. I was rooting for France for crying out. Wow. Oh, I've had enough of the get Olympic out of our basketball. Right now. Enough, enough, and enough. So you heard what Chris Mad Dog Russo had to say there. At the very end, you heard something very interesting. What did he say that was interesting? He said, and I was rooting for France, right? I was rooting for France. Now, there seems to be some NBA players, even like, uh, not NBA players, NBA players and fans, like, for instance, uh, Kevin Durant, surprised that people were supporting other players, like, like Nuggets fans were supporting Serbia over the USA and all of that. And uh, they were upset about that. Some other people out there upset about the fact that uh, if you're an American, why aren't you supporting Team USA and all of that? I said it in the show then, and I need to say it now. There, look, people look, there, look, some, some, some of y'all are living like in this. Uh, uh, listen, there are people out there that are not fans of this current brand of basketball. They're not fans. They're not fans of this era. They're not fans of what this era of basketball represents. Some of them like the international players more, and they're not going to root for them. The other reason some people probably didn't root for this team was because all of the ridiculous hype surrounding the team. Oh, they're better than the Dream Team. They're this team. They're that team. They're the Avengers and all of that. And people like Chris Mad Dog Russo talking about, well, you're talking about the Avengers. If you know anything about the Avengers, you would know that they're the greatest amalgamation of superheroes in the Marvel Universe. They basically go out there and whoop ass. And that was not what was happening, especially in those two final games. USA was holding on for their life. And if you listen carefully, he said there were 17 point favorites going into the game. So when you see them holding off at their life and having, having these memorable moments, he's not buying into it. I think other people are turned off for the fact that this team is being compared to the Dream Team. If we look at the Dream Team's uh, uh, roster, that team was comprised of Christian Leitner, David Robinson, who I believe scored 70 in an in, in NBA game, 70 points, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Patrick Ewan, Larry Bird, uh, uh, Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, Clyde Drexler, Karl Malone, um, um, John Stockton, Chris Mullen, Charles Barkley, and Magic Johnson. This team is laden 
with top 75 guys laden with them i mean uh, david robinson patrick ewan larry bird scotty pippen michael jordan clyde drexler carl malone john stockton uh uh uh, uh charles barkley uh uh magic johnson these are just top these 10 guys right there and it was a younger team and you're looking at this team you have stephen curry who's an all-timer obviously top 75 guy you have anthony edwards lebron top 75 guy katie top 75 guy Derek white tyrese halliburton jason tatum uh, Joel Embiid, Drew Holiday, Bam out of bio. Anthony Davis is the top 75 guy and Devin Booker. It's clear to see that the 92 team was clearly more talented. Like you got to be a blind idiot to say that this team is more talented than that team. Now, this team has some very unique players like Kevin Durant, who's very, very talented. You have uh, 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 Stephen Curry, who's very, very talented. You have LeBron James, who's very, very talented. You have Anthony Davis, who's very, very talented. Don't get it twisted. That other team had more talented players, right? And that team was actually a bit younger in certain extents than this team. So you have that energy out there as well, where people, I think people, more people would have gotten behind this team if they didn't overhype them the way that they did. Because I'm trying to figure out why this team is getting more hyped than the 08 team or the 2012 team. Why is this team all of a sudden so special over those teams when those teams were better? You can't be serious telling me that this 2024 team is better than that 08 team. Like, you can't be serious. Or even the 2012 team. I think the 2012 and the 08 team are better than this team. And I think the Dream Team is better, right? The Dream Team was actually doing what it was supposed to do. It was beating opponents by the projected margins. This team is not, was not. That's the fundamental difference. The Dream Team was beating teams by the projected margins where this team was getting a lot of hype going into the games and some of them they were run they were barely making out making it out of those games right but for him saying that he didn't support the team there were a lot of people that didn't support the team that were americans nobody said you got to support the team just because you're an american that's just something you believe that you want everybody else to believe they didn't support them there's some people that just didn't support this team and it's the reality of the matter clearly this is anti-espn rhetoric because they're the ones that were pr promoting this team and saying that oh there could they be better than tonight it was the espn that was promoting this nonsense it was them and then other people started piggybacking on what they were saying and then try to make it into a real thing uh when in reality it was not but look this is going to be hilarious this is going to be a hilarious show as you guys know, Team USA just finished winning the gold medal, right? There was some controversy at the end of it. Some people were saying uh, LeBron should have won the MVP. Some people were saying Stephen Curry should have won the MVP. I think Stephen A. Smith just came out and said he believed that the, the gold medal MVP or whatever should have gone to Stephen Curry. So there are people still going back and forth about that. So what happened yesterday? There was a taping on ESPN First Take, and they had their guest that comes in every Wednesday and Chris Mad Dog Russo. Uh, and during the, his visits, customarily, there's this segment where like is what Mad Dog is mad about, right? Where he just rants and rates, which is hilarious, where he's always shouting and screaming. It's funny, right? But in this particular segment, he decided that he was going to tear into Team USA. I mean, just basically talk about how he was sick and tired of them and all of these stuff with the comparisons and all of that. And he went into this rant that ended up getting Gilbert Arenas on Gil's Arena to damn near rage quit. He started shouting and screaming and hollering over the comments that Chris Mad Dog Russo had to make. So what we want to do now is we want to actually play his comments for you. It's only about a minute or so segment so you guys can hear it. So when we play the Gil audio, it gives you guys some better context. So take a listen to what Chris Mad Dog Russo had to say yesterday on ESPN about the Olympics men's basketball team. Take a listen to that there. I am sick of this USA basketball on the men's side making a big deal about winning a gold medal oh, and Stephon Curry dog. putting people to sleep. It's a 10-day tournament. That was the great Stephon. Oh, oh come down. Stephen. They are Steph. a, whatever his name is. Whoa, 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 whoa. It Steph Curry with the shots. Tournament. They play six games. And you know what they were favored? You know what they were favored in the, in the gold medal game? By 16 points. They got a million Hall of Famers on this team. And then Duran is tweeting after the game, look at me with all these gold medals. And he's on the slide. And tweeting, oh, calm down, guys, calm down. The most significant gold medal, gold medal in basketball we ever won, without a doubt, is 1976, because that's Mad after dog. we got Mad absolutely dog. killed no. in 72 in Munich. But the idea that we are going to make a big deal that Duran 
and Davis and Embiid and Booker and Curry and LeBron. These are the, some of the greatest basketball players in the history of creation. And they beat Evan Fournay. And we're supposed to wow. get excited. Wow. I mean, you, and Batone, whatever his name is. I mean, wow. you got to be kidding me that this is that big Don't. deal. I was rooting for France for crying out. Wow. Oh, I've had enough of the get Olympic out of our basketball. Right now. Enough, enough, and enough. So you heard his comments, right? You heard what he had to say. He didn't hold back. So yesterday during Gills Arena, they were talking about the Lakers, Paul George and the Sixers, I think Stephen Curry, his future with the Warriors. And then there was a segment they were reacting to what Chris Mad Dog Rooster had to say, and they didn't play his full audio, by the way. But anyway, there was a segment of them reacting to what he had to say, and you already knew that this was going to trigger Gilbert Arenas as he was listening to it. And... Rest assured, that is exactly what happened. And then he started to go off. And then Rashard McCant is kind of like pushing back on him and all of that. And it created this hilarious moment where he basically rage quitted uh, on, the on, the, on the set of the studio because of what Chris Mad Dog Russo had to say. So so what we want to do now is, and we want you guys to put on your seatbelt, I want you all to take a listen to Gilbert Arenas basically rage quitting after uh, Chris Mad Dog Russo went at this uh, 2024 Olympic team. Take a listen to that there. Chris Mad Dog Russo rips Steph and the rest of Team USA's Olympic squad, saying the following, I am sick of this USA basketball on the men's side making a big deal about winning a gold medal. Steph Curry putting people to sleep. The most significant gold medal in basketball we ever won was in 1976. This current Team USA squad, they beat Evan Fournier. Is Mad Dog spitting or tripping about Team USA? You know he's spitting. <laughs> he's 1976. people don't want to be hearing that don't be wanting to hear it because they just want to be like, yo, we won. It's a win. It's a medal. It's this, it's that. But it's like, at the end of the day, Mad Dog say, y'all beat Aaron Fournier, man. Y'all move around. An NBA and, and, player. Oh, who, who they beat? No, no. Who they beat in 1976, then? Mun uh, huh? Yugoslavia. Who? <laughs> we beat Paris. OK, then. Then, then what? Then, 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 then we beat Paris. In Paris. And we just gonna throw out the whole team name. Which player? Cause we know. We, what did he say? Fournier. Yes, M. Fournier. Who, who was on Yugoslavia again? <laughs> I think it was. Please. Oh, it wasn't Vladi. He wasn't born yet. I don't yeah. think he was born yet. Mirza, Demi Vlasnic, Drazen, Dali Pogic, Darko, Balajic, Damir Solomon. Okay, 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 we get it. Yeah. Oh, so a bunch of mother. A million names, right. we might be able to Not an away. NBA player, right? Who was on the, U, who was on the <laughs> USA team? Who was on the USA team? Uh, who was on the USA team then? Bill Ford, Steve Shepard, Adrian Bentley, Walter Davis, Quinn Buckner, Ernie Brunfield, Kenneth Carr, Scott May, Tate Armstrong. Tom oh, Carr, I remember that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this was a. This was 1976. Was the most important. Championship? I mean, uh, according to uh, Chris Mad Dog Russo. Okay, they beat Puerto Rico by one. Mm, that is true, good. They Come beat on. a team 2-0 to team forfeited. They forfeited. Beat Czechoslovakia by five. And they beat a team what by is? five. What, what, what makes this team important? There was not one NBA player on this team probably, right? No, 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 no there's NBA one. guys, but... No, was there was no NBA. All college. All college. Was this doing all college. All college. I'm, I'm not a historian. Who, USA? Was this, yeah, it was college. Was college. this doing like the Cold War thing? Like yeah, Yugoslavia? that's why he said. No. He said no. That's why he, he said, said it's most important. He said, he said, he said it was important was going because on. they lost in 72 and they came back in 76 and won. That's what's up. Oh. Yeah. We, also we lost in 04 and, and came back in 08 and won. What the fuck just saying that that one's better than that one? Of course. You want to minimize anything that has a... The end of what he said makes perfect sense. And this is why I can't respect what he's saying. He said he was rooting for France to win. He's an American reporter who reports on American basketball players rooting for them to lose. That right there, just mm. I can't respect what you're saying then because it comes with a jaded mind. No, get we're, he we're, said, we're he covering said, basketball. You're not covering. I'm we're rooting for, I'm rooting for the USA to lose as a reporter. That means no matter what the f 
happened in the game, he don't care. But what you're telling me, I, I, you're he telling don't me that care. I have to root for No, I'm not saying, saying you have to yes, root for are. But you're saying you're rooting against him. I'm yeah. not saying you... You're saying if I don't, you, you you pick, if I don't root for France, I have to root for the No, United I'm saying you're picking... Because I'm from here. No, you're saying you're picking so this I, team. <laughs> that means anything this team do, you don't give a... Why do because we it's care better, what you're saying? Because it's a better story. No, I, it's a lose. better if no, they lose. If they lose, it's a better story. So, but they didn't lose. But so why do I care? So that means yeah. you're all you, your narrative was hoping they lose, yeah. so you can yeah. them up. Yeah. Because so it's not they won. Because it's not they, impressive. They that's won. Not, it's not impressive. They won, so I'm not impressed. But I'm so not impressed. Yeah. So, so that's why. So he couldn't go in on them. So that's yes. why he says his little. Yeah, it's just in. not impressive. So your narrative is already written, no matter it is. what. Because yeah. it wasn't impressive. Of course it isn't. No. Because you're not, not impressed. No, because it wasn't impressive. It, it, it's never been impressive. No, it has been. No, 92. Tell me somebody who they played in 92. So you heard what your man had to say, right? He also got pretty tight when uh, Mad Dog said that um, he, he, he wasn't supporting the team. So let's get into the nitty gritty of this. Gil is upset that because he's upset at the fact that Mad Dog basically took another crap on this era. Here's what kills me with Gil and people like him to share his views. Gilbert Arenas and these guys, throw their, they throw rocks and hide their hands. They act like there is not extensive footage of them on the internet taking shots at people in the past. They act like we've never heard them like basically applauding people like JJ Redick when he was basically making fun of players in the past. Their videos, matter of fact, Gilbert Arena said, if you're, what is it? If you, uh, if you played in the 80s, I think he said, I think the 70s or the 80s, you can't be in my top five or something like he doesn't rank you or something like that. So Gilbert has a legitimate bias against players from the past. So it's hilarious to me that he gets upset when people have a bias against players, uh, modern day NBA players. I don't get it. Gil has even taken shots at Jordan inexplicably in order to make this era a real thing and make the LeBron GOAT debate a real thing. I've seen him do it. They're like videos where you find Gilbert Arena saying, LeBron James is the GOAT. Then you find another video of him saying, Michael Jordan is the GOAT. How is that possible? How can your opinions on these things go back and forth? So Gil is taking shots at players in the past on many occasions. When that thing is, we're done with the 90s, we're done with the, he was jacking that wave. He was jacking that wave. So when all of these different things are being put out, we're done with the 90s and all of that, of course they're going to be fans of like, we're done with this era. Hello? So if this you're telling me that this particular team is a team that represents this era, you think every basketball fan, whether they're American or not, is going to be support this, going to support this? Like, are you that naive? Are you that naive? Like, who are we kidding here? So, of course, the people are not going to... Now, to Chris Mad Dog Russo's points, he brought up two points that the moderator in their show didn't bring up. He talked about the fact that this team was favored in every single game to win. Even in the gold medal game when they were favored by 17 points to win that game. Nobody talks about that. You talk about who the dream team was supposed to be. The dream team actually beat the projections. They lived up to their projections. They were projected to wipe the floor with their opponents. That's exactly what they did. This team, however, did not do that. There were many games where they were favorites going in by 10 points, 12 points, 17 points, and they barely walked out of that uh, gymnasium with the victory. So that was there as well. And Chris Mad Dog Russo is saying, what's so impressive when you have a team full of the Avengers? He's like, what's so impressive about that? And the irony is, the very thing that Chris Mad Dog Russo was saying is not impressive is the very thing Gilbert Arenas was saying when he found out that they were going to go play. When Gil found out that LeBron, Stav, KD, and all of that, he was the same one on his show, hollering and screaming, twerking it up all over the place, talking about, oh, yeah, it's a wrap. We're going to beat them by 150,000. He was hype. He was hooded hype. He was super duper hype. Super hype. Super hype. So when he saw 
that they damn near lost to almost lost to Serbia. What happened to all of that energy? So people on the other side were like, but look at you. You dudes were the ones that were hyping this entire thing up. What happened? For as much as y'all was hyping it up, I didn't see it. Y'all was talking about the Avengers. I don't know what comic book Avengers y'all are talking about. So of course there's going to be this element within the room. But for him to get so triggered, it's like, well, you hate on everything. Kill, you hate on players. Not only, listen, I to, uh, this was a while ago, man. I haven't texted Gil in a long time. But he was like, he likes everybody. Gil's like, I like everybody in basketball. I'm like, no, you don't. He's like, I'm a fan of the entire. I'm like, no, you're not. What are you talking about? He's like, no, I like everybody. I'm like, no, you don't. I'm like, you don't like foreign players. What are you talking about? You don't like foreign players. You do not like foreign players. So don't say you're a fan of basketball. No, you're not. You're a fan of a particular brand of basketball, which is, I guess, modern day basketball. But you don't like players in the past. And you, and by the past, I mean 90s and 80s and beyond. Because Gil came from the 2000s. So uh, so he, he, would, he, would, he would respect players in the 90s. But I think that's where it stops. 80s, 70s, no. Right? He doesn't respect those players. And he also doesn't respect foreign players. He doesn't. He's always taking craps on them. Like, let's be for real. So you don't love the game the way you say that you do. You also have biases like the next person. Because even though you're an NBA player, you're also a human being first. You're a person before you're a basketball player. So Rashard McCann at least has the balls to say, yo, he said the other like, he's like, I'm a hater. He's like, I like this dude. I rock with this dude. I rock with Kobe. I rock with these guys. I don't rock with these guys. But to say I rock with everybody, man, stop that nonsense. Right? But it was kind of funny seeing Gilbert Arenas uh, rage quit on this particular show here. It was it was, it was was pretty damn funny, right? Uh, Chris Mad Dog Russo was able to really, really get under his skin there. So, uh, 